everybody welcome back to the channel and welcome back to yet another reaction video if you're new here for the first time my name is tmr and over here we talk reactions and reviews thank you so much for clicking on this video and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let's go so you guys, the moment we all have been waiting for, it finally happened. The tension has been brewing with Candace and Monique. So if you didn't catch it last night, you finally saw Candace and Monique explode. More like Monique exploding on Candace. So they were at this wine tasting, um, basically celebrating Giselle's um for the book that she has wrote and they were saying some little words basically Candace was you know a little irritated with Monique when they went on Monique's birthday trip and as she was leaving Candace and her husband were leaving you know Candace tried to say goodbye to Monique and Monique pretended like she was laying on the couch sleep obviously Chris Monique's husband was like okay hey thanks for coming appreciate you guys you know you and Chris is always gonna be good with me blah 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 Monique still laid on the couch sleep so at the wine tasting Candace kind of brung that up and Monique was getting irritated because she was like well you don't understand I was really really tired like I had through that whole event together you know I had a lot going on with the children trying to get them situated so I can come you know and put on this festivities for you guys you don't understand it because you're not a mom so Candace is like whoa whoa what does me having a me not being a mom have anything to do with anything and she's like oh so your mom shaming your mom shaming Monique was like if that's what you want to call it so they get in each other's face sort of kind of because from what I've seen there was a table separating the two had a drink in her hand you know because they again they were at a wine tasting and you know she was kind of like I'll drag you, I'll drag you. This is what Candace saying, Monique. And Monique was like, oh, so you gonna drag me? Well, come on, drag me. And the next thing you know, Monique extends her hand and starts flipping Candace's hair. And before you knew it, Monique had her hands wrapped around Candace's head and was pulling it. Child, I thought to myself, are we really acting like this? Uh, First of all, we are adult women here. We're also adult women who are on television. And we also have a certain caliber of income status. I would think you women could just learn how to control yourself around each other. Like, we get it. And you know what I don't understand about this whole group? Really, with all these reality housewives, if you guys don't like each other, why do you keep forcing each other to be around each other? Like... They keep having these events where all of them are together knowing that one doesn't like this one or th these two don't like this one. Like, why do you guys, you guys let me know down below what you think about that. But honey, Monique was holding on to Candace here for dear life. Y'all, when I tell you all the hood came out in Monique, all the ladies were flabbergasted. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. Karen was screaming at the top of her lungs to have Monique let Candace go. The producers come running on the set, trying to mon pull Monique off. Finally, they was able to pull Monique off and push her out the room. The other ladies was trying to calm Candace down and get her wig back straight. Cause you know, y'all Candace has that hair business. So sis, I want to know who braided Candace hair down because I want to go to her too. Cause sis, your wig didn't go anywhere. Okay. Shout out to the person who braided down Candace wig. Cause they are the real MVP for that. So you guys, they were able to push Monique and Candace apart. The producer took Monique out into the hallway area or wherever they were to kind of calm her down and get the side of the story. And y'all, you could just tell Monique, Monique didn't really have anything to say. Obviously, you guys, if you've been watching this episode that's been going on this season, you've seen the tension brewing between them. A lot of it is coming from the fact that Candace and Cherie have become friends. You know, Cherie was spreading around rumors that Monique was having an affair with her trainer. And I'm starting to feel like, well, sis, it, Monique, is some truth to this? Because you're getting awful upset about a lie, sis. If it really is no validity in this, why are you getting so super upset? So the next thing I know, you guys, they were able to usher Candace out, get her in the car to get her to safety. Because, honey, she definitely needs some type of security. Well, Monique crazy ass running around. And, girl, the next thing you know, Monique busting out the building. Y'all, you see Monique running running trying to catch candace and everybody was like 
oh my god they couldn't believe what they were seeing so monique gets in the car you see candace in the car as well and she's driving off she calls her husband to let him know what was going on and he's just like what are you serious are you okay are you all right she was like yeah i'm just so frustrated like that's now how i want it to be portrayed like i'm a woman i'm classy you know as black women we shouldn't be out here acting like that and i'm with candace when it comes to that then you see monique in the car talking to her husband and honey, Chris was not for the foolishness. He was like, you did what? To who? You was acting like what? Out where? Child, it was a mess. So obviously later on in the scenes, um, they split to where Candace is talking to her husband and he was very, you know, sympathetic or empathetic with what she was going through. And then you split to see Monique and her husband talking and y'all Chris, he wasn't here for it. He, he said that Monique had no business acting like that. She had no business putting her hands on him. He was like, I really like Candace and her husband. He was very upset that Monique portrayed herself like that. And at the end of the day, understandably so, because Monique, you are a professional woman, you're on television, you got money, sis, you needed to pay somebody to pull her hair off her head. Yeah, you don't do that yourself. When you get to a certain standard, sis, you, you got to pay somebody to do all that. You let somebody else take care of your light work. You don't do that. But you guys, that was just me trying to be funny. In all fairness, Monique was dead wrong for putting her hands on that girl. Yes, Candace was taunting her. Yes, y'all, as, as we know, watching Candace, Candace will get on your last nerve, but it's never right to put your hands on anybody. And Monique was dead wrong for putting her hands on that girl because Candace never touched her. Now, obviously, Monique got bust upside the mouth with Candace Glass, rightfully so. She she really deserved a little bit more than that because you messed up Candace's good, good, good human hair. And since you was wrong for that. Next, you guys, we, we're going to talk about Ashley Darby and her husband Michael you know they've been in the vlogs a lot here lately and you know just recently it was exposed that Michael was caught at a hotel with a woman he said he was so drunk and tired that he couldn't perform I guess so you 100 years old you lucky Ashley he was even giving you any time of day but Ashley tells the ladies at the wine tasting that you know, they have talked about it. Her husband is very, you know, apologetic for what happened and for to, to publicly humiliate her. She also revealed that Michael and her are swingers or has been swingers. And basically since she's had the baby, she don't want that life no more. She ain't about that life. And I'm like, but sis, I mean, what you expect? You, you gave your husband the green light to do what he's doing and you mad because you stop and he want to keep going when y'all was doing it together sis i mean either slow down or catch up you gotta do one of the two so ashley talks to her husband and y'all i'm gonna be honest with you my opinion of their whole little situation you know if you've been watching potomac since it's been coming on you know ashley's been trying to get pregnant she finally convinced Michael to get her pregnant because, y'all, he was holding on for dear life. He was not trying to get that girl pregnant. I don't know what she was able to say or what she put in that man drink to convince her to put a baby in her, but he finally did. And he just really feels now that there's a baby, he doesn't really feel like the sex was the same when it was. You know, basically, when there was no children that they had to worry about and they could swing from the chandeliers in that beautiful apartment that they living in, he's not really with the whole wife husband baby life but i actually ashley's trying to take a change because she's a mommy now she don't want that life anymore so she basically gave her husband an ultimatum she was like look we signed a prenup before we got married and that it's been more than five years at five years that prenup has expired she said now i need you to sign a postnup because at the end of the day i need to protect my bag for me and dean her baby son and i understand sis and if you don't know ashley is also expecting another child she's due in january so ashley is trying to protect that bag but one thing i can tell you about a man you cannot stop what you've always promoted. And since you have promoted that lifestyle that he is so used to, and now that you didn't have one baby and a pregnant with another so one, good luck to Ashley and Michael. I hope they work that out. Sis, I really hope you get the coins that you so deserve and you have fought 
really, really hard for it. Because for you to be sitting up there with rumple still skin, since you earn every dime that you could get. There's a lot going on in this episode, but you know what I wanted, y'all? Just a little break. Oh, Robin. Y'all, how is Robin still on the show? Sis don't have no storyline. She don't have anything to talk about. Sit, Robin, we need some action over there, sis. So we're going to have to replace you with a new housewife from Potomac. Because, sis, you are tired and boring. Okay? So, Giselle and her ex-husband, Jamal Bryan. Jamal Bryan has bought his daughters a restaurant in Atlanta. And... Giselle and her daughters drove to Atlanta to, you know, for the relaunching of this restaurant. And Giselle meets her father there in Atlanta. They have breakfast together. She decided to let her father know that her and Jamal are trying to reunite their relationship and get their family back together. And y'all at the breakfast, the dad seemed like he was okay with it. He was like, oh, okay, well, you know, she was like, All right, will you come and, you know, have dinner with us? And he was like, yeah, I'll do that, you know. Obviously, as a parent, you know, us as parents, we try to, you know, be there for our children through good and bad. He also, you know, Giselle also talked how when her and her husband got married, her and Jamal got married, that dad wasn't at the wedding. So Giselle is hoping that her dad is all for them reuniting their family. I guess Giselle want her daddy as happy for her as she is for him. But y'all, we all know Jamal's past and everybody kind of like side eye when it comes to jamal so they get to this dinner. they go through the restaurant they tour the restaurant and then y'all they get to this dinner okay and the next thing you know her dad gets up and the producers follow him like what's going on and he's like i can't do this like take the mic off i'm not for this shenanigans i'm not gonna be a part of this man and his facade of trying to get this family back. dad knows that at the end of the day a leopard cannot most definitely change his spots and he said this man got six or seven baby mamas and i'm not a part of this i want my daughter I, you know i want better for my daughter and y'all rightfully so but at the end of the day what can you do if giselle is an adult She's been married to this man once before. I guess she's willing to forgive all that she has went through. And she's trying to rekindle a relationship with a man that has really publicly humiliated her time at the time, at the time, at the time again. Giselle also said that, you know, somebody asked her, one of the producer asked her, how many kids does Jamal have? And Giselle was very adamant on saying that she's not going to speak about any other children other than the one she birthed. And she's not going to speak about the mothers either because she feel like it's not right to speak about children that she did not birth into the world. Uh, translation, sis, you don't want to bring up the fact that your husband got a whole pass and he had it all on you. Okay, y'all let me know down below all that you've seen on this episode and let me know how you felt about Giselle's father walking out of that dinner. Do you feel like he was right for doing that? Do you feel like he was, was that rude or disrespectful for him to do that? Again, you guys let me know down below. And last but not least, you guys, we're gonna get on over to Karen and her husband. You know, Karen has been talking a lot lately about how her and her husband have really lost the luster in their relationship. I mean, at the end of the day, Karen, what is he about 20 years your senior sis? You know, you ready to keep going and he's ready to go take a nap. Well, Karen decided to call one of her old friends that has a, a podcast called Pillow Talk. And she was hoping that, you know, this conversation that her and her husband can have with this uh, woman from Pillow Talk that can help rekindle some of the things that's going on or have them open, help this woman help them open up a little more. OK, and so she started asking questions and she asked Karen, like, are you in love with your husband? And she said, yes. And she said, well, how do you know that you're in love with him? She's and Karen rightfully said, because I can't imagine myself without him. OK. And so when the question was asked to her husband, he basically said, yeah, I don't know if I'm in love with her. And Karen was like, what? Uh, you know, he basically said that. I, I mean, I used to be in love with her, but the things that she did back then, she doesn't do anymore. One of the things is sis don't cook anymore. OK, he said when he noticed that when she was cooking, it's because the kids was there because, you know, they have a son and a daughter. The kids were there and she cooked for the kids. But once the kids left, I guess Karen felt like she didn't have to cook anymore. And, you know, with him being an older gentleman, 
there's certain things that he's accustomed to and him, his wife taking care of his needs. And I guess his belly is a big need for him. She's not doing that. You know, at the end of the day, y'all, it's always fine and dandy and cute to have these chefs come in and fix big fancy meals for your husband. But at the end of the day, honey, a man wants to see you behind that stove from time to time. So y'all, when, and he was very truthful. He was very truthful in saying, I don't know if I'm in love with you. And y'all, that broke Karen's heart. She couldn't even talk anymore. Y'all felt so bad for Karen, but at the end of the day, like she said, I respect you for telling the truth, but that don't mean I got to be happy with what you said. Lord, Karen, poor Karen. I hope her and her husband are able to make it because I feel like Karen does love her husband. And I just feel like her husband is really not for the life that Karen is trying to have right now. You know, Karen is running a business. She has this perfume line and she's doing a lot more traveling. You know, Karen is trying to secure that bag because she, Karen, no. Her husband's not going to live forever. And when he leaves, sis got to make sure that she can still take care of herself. And I'm all for that. Y'all let me know down below what y'all think about the events that played out on this episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. And I'm going to definitely will see y'all next Sunday for the next one. Remember, you guys, sub what you love. Bye-bye.